more should have been done to allay staff fears and better records should have been kept. One criticism of Manchester University tonight after an independent report found that six deaths at the university were not due to radiation contamination. Well, Nina Warhurst has been following the story for us. Um, before we get into the details of the report, Nina, background, please. What's the story that we're following? Well, the Rutherford Building at Manchester University is perhaps one of its most famous. It's where Ernest Rutherford, um, a world-famous Nobel Prize-winning physicist, first split the atom. Everybody knows about that building. But um, critics say that because of the nature of the work he carried out there, he was working with plutonium, uh, mercury and other dangerous materials, radium, that perhaps the building there has been contaminated and as a result of that, members of staff have um, contracted cancer. Because there have been deaths, quite a number of deaths related yeah, to this. Have been... six in total. Yeah. Yeah. In the past two years alone, there have been three deaths from pancreatic cancer. Um, and aside from that, uh, in February, a 25-year-old support worker died from a brain tumour in 1992. A researcher died from a brain tumour. And in 84, um, another support worker died from cancer. And so campaigners, perhaps quite predictably, have said that this has got to be more than coincidence. But... To counter that, mm. um, Rutherford's experiments were 1920 and previous. I mean, this mm. is quite a long time ago, surely. It's, it's highly unlikely, isn't it, that the radiation contamination could hang around that long? Well, that's exactly what the university have said. They've also always said that um, the, the building isn't contaminated and that these deaths are coincidence. And that's why they asked Professor David Coggan to conduct this report. Now, he's from the Medical Research Council and is a world-renowned expert in uh, workplace illnesses. And the, report, the um, results of his study were released today, and I think uh, we've got... Um, the overall conclusion. Now, he said that despite some uncertainties about the exact levels of contamination in the past, he says he can be pretty confident that any risk to health has been small and that the cases of cancer that have occurred among former occupants of the Rutherford building are not a consequence of the contamination. OK, well, that's his words. What's mm. been the response from the university and those campaigners involved? Well, obviously, the university is very relieved. They've released a statement saying that they welcome the publication and that, uh, of the independent report and fully accept its conclusions. But we've already had um, some criticisms. We've had the university and college union have come out as saying that... Uh, that Manchester University should be blamed for not acting earlier to allay staff fears about potential dangers of contamination. And they're also concerned that the university hadn't kept or preserved proper health and safety records before 1999. Now, this is a criticism that's come up time after time, that the records can't be trusted. And today, at the press conference, David Coggan responded to those criticisms. Even if you took... Uh a very conservative uh, 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 approach and said, well, maybe they were five times higher, which I think is, is, is um, excessive. But even if you took that approach, the, the risks of cancer would still be, uh, particularly pancreatic cancer and brain cancer, would still be extremely small. The possible risks of lung cancer might be a bit higher, but, but, but still much, much smaller than the risk of, from smoking, say. In fact, he said, even if you were at risk from lung cancer, it would be the same risk as from passive smoking. And in fact, that was below 10 per 10,000. That was just one response from the university and colleges union. And we're expecting more. And I'll be back with you at six with an update.